Ready? Well, God bless you, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday night uh, servants teaching. Every Wednesday, we do a teaching from one of our servants at the Los Angeles Church. But because the Lord has blessed us with a Wednesday night women's Bible study, we're, we are going to be changing our model Wednesdays to Tuesdays so that we could, the boys could help out the girls with the kids so all the girls could be at the study. So our model Tuesday, next week is going to be Tuesday, and our model elder Mark Risty is going to start off all the servants every Tuesday. So I wanted to welcome you. God bless you. So talk to Del, every one of you. This time of teaching, I pray that God would open your heart, bless your mind, and God to give you peace and direction. The teaching, Ariat Bushol, the tactics that the devil uses to tempt us. I pray that tonight he would be exposed in the name of Jesus Amen. and that we will be able to resist the temptations, to resist the devil, and he must flee. Amen. Nikki, pray for us and everybody on the internet. Amen. We ask for our forgiveness, Lord, of our sins, and Lord. Yes. Lord, we pray that you would lead us and guide us tonight, that you would take over the teaching today. That you would move us out of the way, that you would take over the day. And pray that the word will come forth, that we will bless us, that you will teach us, Lord, and heal us, Lord, the spiritual. And for those who are watching too at home, that Lord, I pray that we will receive it, Lord. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. Katsesia Mensa, or Wallace, Kalesko Kersa. I want to thank God. For Wallace, he opened up his house for us. He's been really dedicated on Mende, but I never got to come to his house to do a service, and I thank God for this opportunity. Amen. So I ask the Lord, Holy Spirit, take over this time of prayer and worship. Let this bless your hearts in Jesus' name. Go ahead, lead us in worship. I will. Ship you, oh my God. There is none like you. I worship you, oh Prince of Peace. That is all I.
of the mountains blow. Trenches them like honey. Remove it, hold up. When I speak your name. And these servants take turns every Wednesday to teach every servant. Amen. And the Kangari needs to be able to teach and preach the word of God. And we give the pulpit and the opportunity to preach the word. I encourage to, to teach the word. And basically, every servant in the LA church will be teaching at the minimum twice a year on, on the internet that we have. And so I started off. I started, and then the elders take over, and then the ushers take over, and then the choir finishes. And then we start all over again. So I'm excited. For this opportunity, I want to welcome you 
for a model teaching that we have tonight and also let you know that the women's Bible study God blessed us with another night for our church I was so happy about that and so now we have Wednesday night women's Bible study about 30 40 girls get together and I thank God for that so we want to don't hinder that so we're moving it to Tuesday Tuesday on the internet I'm gonna be uh, having one of our teachers one of our servants teach you about the Word of God now with that said Aria Amaro teaching now we're gonna do this back and forth okay I want to show you first of all I'm on a screen I pretty much took over Wallace's house you got to do it strong you got to move it strong there you go okay so here at Wallace's house I took over his wall and here we have Amaro teaching Periat Bushol tactics of temptation now we're gonna go back and forth now you could go ahead and back on me tactics of temptation and this is open forum by the way anybody that wants to add something add if you have a question ask it okay now it's important that everybody knows that there is a blueprint a tactic and battle plan to how the devil attacks us do you know that the devil never changes his tactics do you want to know why Nikki why? because it always works wow. it, works, right? <laughs> it always <laughs> works it, works. Hey, it always works so he doesn't need to change it so this is what we need to learn what are his tactics so it won't work anymore amen, amen. now I want to give you a little example World War One, World War Two, Iraq War. There was powers and strategy, tactics and battle plans. Okay, power and strategy, tactics and battle plans. All right. Now, back on us. Here's the situation. We are at war okay we are at war so when we are at war once you see the change you go ahead and do it okay we are at war and this has to mean something for us if you don't have a problem with somebody right you're at peace but when you have a problem with somebody you're nervous you don't want to find them. Right? You don't want to have a little encounter. Right? Okay. So it's important to know that we watch ourselves. We become aware of our enemy. Right. And this is a person. Right? And we don't want to get in trouble. We don't want to have problems. Can we know that a problem will only end up giving me more problems? And we know this. If we do this, if we fight and argue and say bad words, and then the family's going to get together and we're going to have a big war. Big, bigger trouble. It gets worse and worse and worse. Yes? Yes, yes. So we know that. Yep. So why is it we don't know that about spirituality? Why is it don't we know that once we do that one sin, it's going to end up being a, a snowball effect? A chareso penal. Why we don't think about that? But in our worldly problems, we're careful. How about people don't go to that church or this other church because that guy is there? So why don't we think about chijabin chakai still gambling or casino or bar? Why do we don't think like that? Because we think we don't look at it as an enemy. One hundred percent, Chris. That's why Penal Divano. We are at war. This is a war, Nikki. This is not fun and games, peaches and cream. This is a real war where people die. Yeah. 
We could die spiritually. We could die physically even. Are you hearing me? Instagram. God wants to speak to you so loud tonight. Amen. I hope you have ears to hear what God is saying. Let's go to our first scripture. Ephesians 6, 12. Nikki, could you read that for us? You can read it for me. Love. Love. For we are not at, we, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of this unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in this heavenly place. Perfect. Now, here's the problem. We think that when we have a problem with a person, that's the enemy. No, the enemy is behind that person. It's the unseen enemy that we are actually fighting against. We just feel, finished going through a little story about Jacob and Esau. And how Esau wanted to kill Jacob. And it was because of holy and jealousy. So what happened? God brought peace. God fixed it. It wasn't Esau that was the enemy. It was the holy that he had. Amen? Amen. So I want you to realize this. We are fighting against demonic powers. <coughs> we are fighting against the devil himself. We are fighting a war against principalities. Do you know what that means? It means they're going to beat us up pretty bad if we do it in our own strength. Hey. That's right. There were seven brothers that wanted to fight against one demon-possessed man. Mm -hmm. What happened to them? The seven sons of Sceva, right? Seven. Seven. How could that happen? Because we tend to want to fight a war that you can't see with something that we think we could see. Wrong. It's in the flesh that you're fighting this war. You're going to be beat up. And nothing's going to work out. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Now, if, if this unseen world is powers and principalities, then I want you to look at this. The enemy, powers and principalities, tactics and battle plans. I want you to imagine, just like you see in the picture, a fully armored advanced futuristic soldier he doesn't have bullets lasers and we are the little gajore that comes against that soldier with rocks and with sticks but we're really fighting with rocks and sticks I mean we're really going at it I bind you uh, uh, I, I throw you in the deepest part of the sea. That's ridiculous. Go ahead. Listen. And listen good. Maybe I might get a little backlash on this, but I'd rather get it for saying the truth. Amen. Satan, Pandav tukun was spiritual rope. I sued up to on the pine. Okay, so what I sued at this? Where? In the lake? The sea? What sea? Uh, break in time of prayer. It sounds spiritual. Wow, it's spiritual. home. But the authority is not yours or mine. It's God who rebukes you. God who rebukes the devil. How about if I tell you the war is already won. Amen. Amen. The war is already won. You know where? 
on Calvary, Hallelujah. on the cross, when Jesus said, it is finished, titelestai, paid in full, done. That's the war that was victory. But here's the problem now. We are fighting a war that's already won. Think about this now. Abaskai Kangiri Konamarebas Pangle. Kanaudel Penel, I set you free. What are you doing? Lord, help me. Panglosim. Yes, amen, I did it. Lord, but you don't understand. I'm going to. Yes, I gave you victory. We're the sticks and the rocks. Do you understand? It's a war that's won, but we're still throwing rocks and sticks thinking that's working. It's not. Jesus did it on our behalf. So all we need to do is submit to what Jesus did and follow his instructions. What was his instructions? Submit, stand firm, and the devil must do what? Flee. Do you know what happens when somebody flees? It's a retreat. It means they lost. Amen? Amen. Going to our next point here. Again, we're going back to the armor. We have, again, that futuristic guy, armored from head to toe, special weapon, you name it, he got it. And then you see the little guy with a Roman outfit. So sicodo. How about if I tell you, the guy with the Roman outfit that represents the body armor of God, God's armor is more powerful than the devil himself. That's right. You see, there's a reason God gave us his armor is because we're fighting this unseen world. This world of principality and darkness. Amen? Amen. Now, it's very important that that God gave us armor to fight. <coughs> Omar Ayo Stephen has been doing a fantastic job every Monday on GGCC TV. And they're talking about the armor of God. It is so important to know that God gave us the ability to fight against an unseen world. But then you can ask me, but pastor, I thought you told us it's already won. I thought Jesus already won the war. It's done. It's finished. Well, he did. We don't go to hell now because we chose Jesus and we go to heaven. But we still struggle with something. Or how about a few things? I want to show you a little scripture on the Ephesians 6, 13. Penel Kadia. Therefore, put on. Can everybody say put on? Put on. Put on. The full armor of God. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, I like that. We always read through this. After you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, Penel, after you have done everything to stand, everything to stand, do you know what that means? After you have done Everything to stand. We do a lot of 
things in our own strength. Do you know that? Yes. We do that all the time. As a minister, I do it. Everybody, it's in our nature to do this. De grasa de marizor. But when, when, when we come to the point, Epinel, then stand firm then. After you have done everything to stand, then stand firm then with the belt of truth. See, we try and we try and we always fail and we mess up. But then we say, wait a minute. God gave me the ability. God gave me the strength. Let me put on what he gave me. So when we decide to say no, I got to stand firm. Amen. Amen. Let's go back to the picture. Now, the sticks and the rocks that we use to fight against the tactics and battle plans of Satan, we think they're good, and it sounds good. When we throw a rock at Satan, we want to give the John 3.16, John 17.3, whatever scripture that you love, how about ever? 29-11. Yes. And you just throw the sticks and throw the, the rocks. And you think that you're doing damage. But all you're doing, you're working in vain. Remember the scripture about building your house, Nikki? Mm -hmm. And you're building your house, but then you're doing it in vain because you're building it on sand? Not a solid foundation. So it's in vain. In Taino. So... You're thinking, Dick, I know the scripture, and this is the scripture, and you're throwing it against Satan and your temptation, and in Taino, you're still defeated. You still fall into it. I want to remind you that there are power and strategy. Power and strategy. Could everybody say power and strategy? Power, power and strategy. strategy. Now, power and strategy is what a captain would use to attack by airplane, by ship, and by depth charges. What this means is from every angle and direction, from the top, from the top to the surface, and under. He wants to get you from any way, shape, or form. From all sides. You think the enemy is just going to get you with one thing. But he'll get you from the side or under you or on top with another. This is exposing the tactics and battle plan. This is where we stand now. Just like from the air, from beneath, or from the surface, you have the power and influence of Satan. You have the power of peer pressure of the world. And you have the power of the desire of the flesh. Those are three major points in the tactics and battle plan of Satan. Now, I want you to know first of all how these work. Satan never wants you to think it's safe. Number one. I mean, we use it a lot. Satan made me do it. But Satan doesn't want you to know that he's, he's doing it. The pure pressure of this world, and you guys have to be honest with me. Sometimes when we go buy a suit, we really don't care how we look in it. As long as other people say, yeah, you look okay. How about when you buy a car? 
You don't buy it for yourself. What would my friends think? So how do my Buddha bring up about what other people think? That's right. Right? The world tells us what to do. I am miss out of zombies. Yes. Follow. On TV, Gajo comes out, commercial. You need to buy this right now. I am me. I am you. Yeah, it looks good. I need it. Yes. Dino. For no reason. Dino. Parque, the world screams at us, and here's the problem, and it's pretty scary. We hear the voice of the world more than the voice of God. Wow. Isn't that funny? Then we have the flesh. Let me tell you, gentlemen, the flesh is the most strongest enemy that we have. That's right. You are your worst enemy ever. It's not Satan. It's no one. It's not the world. It's your flesh that's stronger. You can stand firm in any temptation. And then the devil flees. You could don't follow the patterns of this world. But one little desire for that minute, for that week, for that month is more powerful than whatever Satan could bring your way. And you know how do I know? Is because we all go through it. You could be in church, and as soon as you get out, you could mess up, even before you get in the car. That's how you know. The kids get you nervous, the family get you nervous, immediately, from spiritual to flesh, T-bone. So, I want to read this scripture for you. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Amen. Amen. Now, spirit, soul, and body. Today on q and I gave an example about what's the spirit and the soul and the body. The spirit represents your life, the spirit of life. The soul represents what Jesus died for. And your body is the tool that God uses to live in, which is the church. We are the church. So Satan wants to destroy God's church, your life, and make it that your soul ends up in hell, right. separated off from God. This is a battle plan to hurt this area. Now let me show you this again. Our warfare is the devil, the world, and the flesh against our spirit, soul, and body. This is what we are fighting against. And this is what we are fighting for. Do you understand? We are fighting against and we are fighting for our life, our, our body, and our soul. Do you know that at the great white throne judgment, the second resurrection will involve the person's soul that's in hell and the person's body that went to hell. That body is going to be put together with that soul to be judged at the great white throne judgment and will be thrown into the lake of fire, soul and body. And what about Penel? Not Dara Katar Kodoka 
Kaisai Yabel judgment betute, Kaisai Sudan to soul and body. That's where that comes from. That's the reference. So this is the war. This is the war. And this is what we're fighting for. Now, I want to give you some scripture references. On the Romans 8.16, spirit to them. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. <coughs> Mark 8.32, 35, soul. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? And then Romans 12.19, body. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. And this is truly the way to worship him. Amen. This is where we get to. Okay. So now we found out his battle tactics, his direction. Now I want to talk a little bit about this. Does Satan know our minds? What we think? No. He doesn't. Because he's not omniscient or omniscience. He's not. Only God has that attribute. He doesn't know the future. He does not know the future. Satan does not know what's going to happen tomorrow. So what does he do? He sees your daily routine. The devil and the demon see your daily routine. They see everything you do. Whether it's good or bad. And you know definitely we do more bad than good. So they see all the bad we do. So what happens? If you're not an alcoholic, but you go to the casino, they're not going to tempt you with a alcohol. They're going to tempt you with gambling. Why Avelkodo testing? Because we gave it to the devil. It's our fault. We, you see, the devil has an empty gun, and we give him the bullets. Here you go, shoot me. Very good. See, that's the way it is. And so Satan has a field day with us. We make it so easy for Satan. So easy. And so now, whatever we do, we give it up. We show it. The second thing is, we do everything the world does. I remember when Ferragamo first came up. The whole world had it. And then little kids now have it. And little shoes, check you. Everybody, one guy gets something, we all do it. One guy plays golf, we all play golf. One guy gets this deal, or we all want to be like that. It's our nature. That's what we do. And we copy the behaviors and the patterns of this world. That's why Penelo Scripture don't do it. Because we do it. Now the flesh. We were not born, Tantisca Penal, with a cup of black label in our hands. With a cigarette in our mouth, with subya in our hands, draba. It is. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, it's been up. Example, why are we in credit card debt? 
because we swipe it, we go recycling, right? And we use our credit cards. We pay off the credit cards. I'm never gonna use this because of uh, credit cards. I come against it. And what do we do? We cut them and then we order new ones. We put ourselves in debt. And it also, spiritually speaking, we're in debt spiritually. And we're drowning. How do I got here? Son, you taught yourself to be a drug addict, an alcoholic, a gambler, a killer, a fighter, a hater. You did that. Nobody did it. Satan didn't make you do it. The world didn't make you do it. You did it all on your own. That's what we specialize in. Doing what we like. So that's why God has to change our minds, metamorphosis, the way we think, so that the Holy Spirit is helping us to go into the direction where now we need to, how can I say this? We need to be addicted to God. God has to be our addiction. God has to be our, our way of life. We need God. Without Him, I'm going to die. I'm not happy without praying. I'm not happy when I'm not in church. I need to be with people that believe in God. I distrust and the kodol. Nanda draba. Amen. That's where we're getting to. And the tactics and battle plans from Satan is simply for you not to get to this solution. He doesn't want you to get to this point. Everything that he's trying to do is for you not to come to your senses. What am I doing smoking cigarettes? I'm killing myself. I'm taking years off my life that I could take care of my kids. Why am I smoking? Why am I drinking? Why am I gambling when I'm working so hard for my money? I could spend it on my kids and my family. What am I doing? Why am I spending money and taking drugs to make me happy when I could find happiness for free through the penalty and the, and the price of Jesus' blood? Why? Simply because maybe, maybe we like it. Here's the problem, guys. Here's the problem, Instagram. We do it because we simply like it. That's true. Please look like it. On the Romans chapter 7 verse. No I'm not going to put it up. Romans chapter 7 verse 14. It says. What I want to do. I don't do it. What I want is. To serve God. And to love God. And to pray. And to worship. And to be in church. And to, and to evangelize. What I want to do, I don't do it. But what I hate, drugs, gambling, adultery, I, I don't want this in my life. I hate it. But then I find myself doing it. Why? Because it's in here, it's out in the world, and also there's a realm of supernatural darkness and powers that want to destroy you so you won't get to this point of saying I want to repent I do not want to do this anymore and you know what the problem is I believe there's a lot of people at this point I don't want to do this anymore I don't want to do this anymore but they don't know where to start they don't know where to start. Now I'm going to read a scripture for you. And this is a scripture. Man, if I was you, you would get this scripture that I'm going to give you right now. And you would make sticky notes. Put them in your bathroom when you get up to brush your teeth. Put them in your car when you're going to drive. Put them in the kitchen. On the refrigerator. This scripture needs to be your foundation. You want to know what it is? 
or we can leave it for another day. We want to hear First Corinthians yes. 10, 13. Yes. Pastor, while you're getting there, a few days ago, we saw one of the biggest boxing matches of the decade. Yeah. A UFC fighter and a boxing champion. Two champions got together to Marante. And we know it's sports entertainment, but what they did for months was they studied each other. Right. They would watch their previous fights to become sarsulingo tactics, yes. sarsulingo marimoso, that when they get to the time to fight, they're prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing with a football team, Canado time for Super Bowl. Just, just the other team watches the other team that he calls Sarcalimpinga so that they're prepared to go against the other enemy. Yes. So this boxing match we saw, there was one better prepared, Okawo Mayweather. Why was he better prepared? Because he knew his enemy, Stanham, Stanham, Stanham. Stanham. Yeah. I said it wrong. Yeah. He knew that that guy is used to only fighting a little bit, yeah. short rounds. And he knew all I gotta do is get him tired. <coughs> and once I got him tired, the battle's already won. It just took a few hits from the knockout because he was prepared. Ariat, it what about is preparing us Amen. so that we don't have to fight anymore with rocks and sticks, but that we can be clothed in full armor and be ready to be victorious. Amen. 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 God bless you. <coughs> 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that's the scripture. This is what it says. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind, which means everybody goes through this. And God is faithful. Could everybody say God is faithful? God, God is faithful. faithful. That's a major thing, Sean. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you could bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out Amen. so that you can endure it. What's the way out? Did you pin down Jesus that he's the door? Amen. Didn't he say that? Didn't he say that he's the way and the truth and the life? So if you want a way out, then you need to ask Jesus to come into your heart. To fill you with his Holy Spirit. To sanctify you with his word. To sanctify you. Cleanse you. With everything you read here. And you apply it here. It starts to clean you. From the inside out. Pastor, and, it says it's about to end. And this is how the word does work in your life. I want to thank God for you. Thank you for spending this hour with us. I thank God for all of you watching. This will be recorded.